Oh, hi. It's Future History. Looking back on the 2020s from the 2120s, I'm King Dangerously. Chef Dominique Crenn has said that she will serve cultured meat in her San Francisco restaurant, which has three Michelin stars, by the way. It's called Atelier Crenn. Very fancy, very posh. If you didn't know, three Michelin stars, that's the most stars you can get from a Michelin. So it's super duper yummy and also quite pricey usually, little gold flecks in the ice cream, stuff like that. But that's sort of why it's so important that Atelier Crenn will be serving cultured meat, which is, as you may or may not know, meat that is cultivated, uh, also known as uh, stem cell meat or just cell-based meat or meat, <laughs> if you're being cheeky, from uh, biopsies of animals, typically while they're asleep, no harm done, uh, and then mixed up with a bunch of nutrients and basically printed into new meat. And this is a super exciting technology, really big time stuff. And it's just getting started in the 2020s. Chefs like Dominique Crenn are making it happen. So that's really cool. Can't wait to go eat it at her restaurant, Atelier Crenn. Not an affiliate, just excited. Uh, she also inked a deal with Upside Foods, formerly Memphis Meats, to uh, contribute culinary advice and counselling and help them develop some recipes to go along with their awesome new products. Very cool, very exciting. The reason that we're talking about it is that this market is poised for a massive disruption of the legacy classic edition meat production, which has some major technological, moral, and even existential problems. One of those, obviously, is that you have to kill stuff to eat meat. In the future, that's not so much a thing. It's incredibly rare to kill an animal and you know, eat its flesh actually sort of sounds a little bit disgusting to me, but it is done still sometime in the 2120s. People hunt, you know, just to like get in touch with those ancient human roots. But it's going to be very rare a uh, hundred years from when your adorable little brains are absorbing or missing most of this information. Um, but in the meantime, the 2020s are where it really just starts. It, 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 it doesn't exist <laughs> in the, in the uh, earliest days of this video. It's not available commercially. It's been made for like several hundred thousand dollars on a plate, but can't buy it in any stores, can't buy it in any restaurants. So it's a really big deal that someone is cool and obviously attractive and intelligent as Dominique Crenn is doing something like this, uh, really moves the ball forward. She hasn't been serving meat at her restaurants at all partially in protest uh, of the existential challenges from meat production, which are heavily interlinked with its impact on climate. Livestock around the world are responsible for about 15% of climate emissions. Pretty bad, pretty high. High time vortex. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, and they also use a massive amount of land, like livestock uses 26% of all human land. If you factor in how much uh, land we use to grow stuff to feed that livestock, it's actually over a third of all human land on earth is just for livestock that we're gonna eat. So that's a bit much, frankly. I mean, it is our main thing now that we're not hunting and gathering, but it's a bit much still, and we can get it down. We can get it way, way down. In fact, we can get it 98% down, according to one study by cultivating meat instead of, you know, harvesting live animals through death for food. Um, we can also make it 95% less emissive. That's pretty cool. And we can use 50% less energy to do it. So that's a huge cost savings, massively opens up land for new kinds of development or like ecological return, more wilderness, more biodiversity, all sorts of possibilities there, more affordable housing. I mean, that's going to be humongous. So in the 2030s, we'll start seeing that disruption really play out as cultured meat moves from a $15 million market in the early 2020s to closer to a $30 million market in the late 2020s, then the sort of sky's the limit in the 2030s into the higher tens and then the hundreds of millions. And by the 2040s, it's a full on billion plus dollar market as it finally reaches a tipping point with the legacy classic edition meets. It starts nudging them off the stage, which is just fantastic again for all sorts of exciting biological, existential, and you know, fundamentally moral reasons. Do you want to murder a thing that has like 40% of your genes just to feel slightly more satisfied? 
via cheeseburger? I don't particularly. And here in the 2120s, very few people do. As I said, it's more of like um, uh, an adventure style thing to do. Some people do it for like a religious or a family tradition um, activity, like hunting elk, you know, which of course people do in the 2020s, but some people still do it in the 2120s. It's a little bit um, more rarefied, shall we say. Um, but very few people uh, eat meat uh, uh, of the original animal variety in the 2120s. In fact, food is just not that popular at all, writ large. And that's because most people in the 2120s actually live in substrates other than basic biological forms, like inside our collected worlds. And that's a topic for another future history. So, you know, go forth, make the world better. Hope you take a moment to appreciate yourself today. I love you. And I know that you know that's true because you're creating it in your mind just now. Just, you know, smile a little bit about yourself and make somebody else's day a little better. Don't we know it into the future. And uh, as soon as we can, we'll all meet our better Atelier Crenn in San Francisco and maybe we'll get to meet Dominique. All right, happy history. Love you.